The Union Navy was the main naval warfare branch in the United States military during the American Civil War of 1861 to 1865. Today, as usual, we'll be dissecting the rank structure as well as discussing the role that the Navy had within the war. The Union Navy was responsible for the protection of the interior rivers and waterways, as well as the destruction and blockading of the Confederate States of America during the American Civil War. This is not to be confused with the various vessels under the Union Army's command throughout the war that were mainly used for troop transportation. Nevertheless, the main objective of the Union Navy were to maintain and blockade the Confederate States under the direction of Abraham Lincoln, meet vessels of the Confederate States Navy in combat, and carry the war to places in the CSA that were inaccessible to the Union Army, and support the Army via means of weaponry and troop transport. At the beginning of the war, the Navy found itself suffering from a distinct lack of modernization, as well as quite a flawed rank structure. To compensate for this, the rank structure was changed in order for the Navy to change from individual ship warfare to entire fleet warfare, and to even, well, replace the military high command. The Union Navy rapidly saw increased modernization in the techniques of weaponry, sailing, and in the overall design of the ships. The use of the ironclad warship is a testament to this fact. Nonetheless, let us proceed to the naval rank structure of 1865. During the American Civil War after 1864, the highest rank achievable within the Union Navy was Vice Admiral. The rank was derived from the Royal Navy of the United Kingdom and assigned to the Union Navy as an equal to the Lieutenant General, which was being held by Ulysses S. Grant. David Farragut was promoted to the rank of Vice Admiral in December of 1864. Under the Secretary of the Navy, the position was given command over the whole United States Navy. The rank was recognisable by three thick golden bar sleeves and three silver stars on the shoulder strap. Until 1864, the rank of Rear Admiral was the highest rank in the Union Navy. The title was designed as the naval equivalent of the Major General in the Army. The rank may have headed any of the Navy bureaus or commanded a regional fleet, squadron or flotilla. Two broad golden sleeve bars and two silver stars on the shoulder strap identified this rank. The Union Navy's highest rank was Commodore from the commencement of the war until 1862. The position was the equivalent of a Brigadier General in the Army, the rank was in charge of a squadron or a flotilla, and it may have been charged in any of the Navy bureaus. Seven gold narrow sleeve bars and one silver star on the shoulder strap identified this rank. During the American Civil War, the Union Navy's captain rank was the highest among the line officer ranks. The rank was responsible for commanding a single vessel, an office, or perhaps a small fleet of ships. The rank was employed in the Continental Navy during the Revolutionary War and had many of the same powers. The rank was identifiable by six narrow golden sleeve bars and a silver eagle grasping a single anchor on the shoulder strap. The commander position was the second highest rank among the line officer ranks, and it was most typically used as the commander of a smaller vessel or as the secondary commander of a larger one. Five slender gold sleeve bars and two silver oak leaves next to an anchor on the shoulder strap identified this rank. The lieutenant commander position was the lowest rank within the senior line officer ranks. The rank would hold a position similar to that of its successor. Four slender gold sleeve bars, two bronze oak leaves next to an anchor on the shoulder straps identified this rank. Lieutenant was the senior rank among the junior line officers. They would command the station on board a Union vessel, although having minimal command over the actual vessel. They may have held other titles such as assistant surgeon, paymaster, sailmaker, and so on. The rank was identifiable by three slim golden sleeve bars and two bars adjacent to an anchor on the shoulder strap. The master is no longer a rank within the Union Navy or the United States Navy, but it was in the junior line officer grade of ranks. It's now regarded as the lieutenant junior grade position. Their leadership would be identical to the rank that came before it. Two narrow gold sleeve bars and one bar near the anchor on the shoulder straps would identify this rank. The Union Navy's ensign rank was the lowest attainable commissioned line officer rank. It was the rank obtained after completing an officer's training and it offered little in the way of actual command. The rank was identifiable by a small golden sleeve bar and an anchor on the shoulder strap. Warrant officers come in a variety of ranks and serve in a variety of capacities on a daily basis within the Union Navy. Midshipmen and boatswain are the two ranks. The jobs would include functions such as being an advisor to a higher rank, a supply overseer, and so on. The ranks would actually have very little in the way of discernible rank insignias, but it would often include a singular gold stripe across the shoulder tab. 
The boat wain's mate, the gunner's mate, carpenter's mate, master at arms, ship steward, and cook would all be senior petty officers. The ranks' responsibilities would include directing ship repairs, gunnery drills, ship combat, and other activities. The rank would be represented by a star, an eagle, and an anchor on the upper sleeve of the right arm. The junior petty officers would consist of the quartermaster, quarter gunner, captain of the forecastle, captain of the tops, captain of the afterguard, the armourer, the cooper, the ship's corporal, and captain of the hold. These ranks would be presented by, on the upper left of the arm, a single star, an eagle, and an anchor. The Union Navy's lowest rank, the seamen, would account for the majority of those enlisted into the Union Navy. With conflict spiralling out of control, the Union Navy's strength would increase to around 84,000 men. There would be no rank insignia for the rank, and it would have no special command inside the warship, harbour, or station. And to bring this to a conclusion, I hope to see you in the next video, the next rank structure video being the Confederate States Navy, and then we might do the Marine Corps. Until then, I'll see you in the next one.